Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Games on the Road. Our chrysalis creative endeavors, endeavors to sail the seas and share games with you on the road or at sea. At any rate, today's game is Tiny Epic Pirates. But first we had a seaworthy adventure of our own in Glacier National Park. We got some pictures by Lake McDonald with our dogs. No McRibs, no McDuggets, no McFlurries at Lake McDonald. Just the lake and these crazy sailors. But without further ado, let's talk about Tiny Epic Pirates. All right, this is Tiny Epic Pirates in a nutshell. Um, remember that this is not a tutorial, that this is just to give you a feel for the game uh, and how it's played. So when it's set up, you've got all these cards that kind of make your ocean. You'll have a ship, there'll be an enemy ship, which I didn't set up because uh, one of the things about this is it it is quite a hefty setup. So I'm just going to do a nutshell version with uh, just my ship on the board, maybe as if I was playing a solo game, which is available. The goal is to sail your ship uh, around the seas here, uh, maybe plundering different merchant ships to get their goods, um, avoiding the navy ship, uh, maybe searching some places to get these search tokens to help uh, as you sail around, uh, getting new crew, um, and fighting other pirate ships, or plundering communities for booty from the booty bag, and then going to other places to trade those stolen goods in order to get your gold up high enough so that you can go to one of these islands that has a buried treasure icon on it and have enough gold to bury treasure. And then once you do that, you take your tre buried treasure token, cover that up. Uh, the goal is to be the first person to bury all three treasures that you have. Uh, as you fight ships, fight other players, you, c you can level up and get other things, including uh, getting more meeples to apply to your rigging or your cannons or to extort folks for gold. Um, or get these, these surefire tokens, which lets you set the face of a die when you're rolling for combat. So um, that's pretty good because for each time your die matches one of your crewmates, that does one damage. So if you, for example, here I have uh, fours and fives, which are really good for me to be able to use this token to set it to a five and to a four. That means I would do six uh, seven eight damage, which is a lot of damage in this game. The other part of this is you have a little rondel uh, wheel where your captain moves around and gives orders, and you always have to go forward on the wheel. and And to be able to skip orders, you use these meeples here to uh, skip skip over orders. However, when the navy ship comes into your space, all of these guys here actually don't count for anything anymore. They get moved over into the repair side of your board and then you have to uh, deploy them and get them back and put them back here. So the Navy ship doesn't actually do damage to you or anything. It just um, makes all of your people kind of go to repair and makes it slows you down a bit. The goal of the game is to bury three treasures onto the map by getting gold through plundering uh, villages and ships. And that is Tiny Epic Pirates in a nutshell. Okay, let's talk the ratings for Tiny Epic Pirates as a game on the road. So first of all, cargo space. I mean, it's, it's a huge game for a small box, but that's usually how Tiny Epic games are. But yes, two thumbs up. Uh, lots of game for that tiny box. Table space. Well, I'm going to have to give this one a thumbs down. I've only got one player set up. I don't even have another player and their crew set up somewhere. Although, each player and their crew doesn't take as much uh, space as what we've got here. Um, it's just, you've got a 4x4 four four grid of uh, larger than tarot size cards laid out. Um, and then er the market, and then everybody has a, a, a good size space just for their area. So... Yeah, I have to say this is a thumbs down for table space. 
So for time to learn, yeah, this takes a little bit. I would also watch a tutorial of this before leaving home if this is something you want to play on the road. Uh, I got to give it a thumbs down. This is not a, a quick grab it and go and teach it very easily game. Um, however, I do like the game a whole lot. Uh, there's a lot of different aspects of it. If you're a gamer, I would say this is a game for gamers. You're moving your ship around, you're plundering, you're attacking other ships, you're worrying about the Navy vessel coming too close to you, there's storms to navigate. I mean, it's it's a really fun game, uh, but to learn all of the different effects of all the different things takes a little bit of time. Setup time. I got to give this a thumbs down for setup time too. This There's a lot of little bits to put in the right places and get everything set up. Uh, it is a little bit of a time commitment, not just for the setup, but the length of the game is a little bit of a time commitment. I would say that this is definitely a rainy day game. Um, when you're sitting inside trying to uh, forget about the fact that it's terrible outside and you can't be hiking or whatever, uh, this would be a great way to spend a, a rainy, terrible afternoon. Setting this on a picnic table, whether you have rocks, magnets, whatever this, no, 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 no. There is way too many little bits, light bits uh, that can be blown or pushed around. Um, it, it's definitely not something you want to set outside on a picnic table. Uh, it's a big game for a tiny box, but it is not something that you want sitting outside and one of the, in a gust of wind takes your whole board and the cards and tokens and yeah, it's a no go. Replayability, I'm giving it two thumbs up. There's enough going on and different uh, ways that the board could be laid out, different places where the storms are. Um, you're also working against other people and they're moving ships around. I think this has got a real high replayability value. And for a two-player game, I think this is a two thumbs up as well. I mean, I could see with a three or a four-player game having another ship out there to attack and, and level up easier uh, would, would make it a little bit uh, more fun, I guess. I've never played a three-player game. I've only played the two-player game. There was enough going on that kept the whole thing interesting, so I would definitely give this uh, two thumbs up for a two-player game. If I was going to give it an overall rating based on the way we're camping, uh, which means that we are outside a lot because we're in a really tiny space, um, then I would give it a, a wavy hand. However, if we were doing traveling around, uh, we had everything in the car, but every night we got to unload into a cabin or uh, we had hotel rooms or something like that, then I would actually say give this two thumbs up. I mean, there's a big swing there, but if you've got the space and you, and, but you don't have the carrying capacity for a lot of games, um, but you definitely have the space to play it, then I would say go for it. If you're camping and you don't have a lot of space to set things up, then uh, I don't know. You may, you may opt for some other smaller games, small box, smaller table size, not as many bits. Um, but I, I, I love the game, and I think that if you are traveling and have places where you could set it up, definitely take it with you on the road.